This video is sponsored by Stream. Build high quality, flexible chat experiences in your iOS app with the Stream SDK. Get started for free with the link in the description down below. All right, we're going to go ahead and open up Xcode and create a new project here. We'll stick with the app template under iOS, and I'm going to call this project fonts. You can make sure that your language is set to Swift and your interface is storyboard. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. And first things first, as soon as Xcode decides to stop being slow, we're going to close this right panel. We're going to expand our Xcode window and we're going to select a simulator to run this in. I'll stick with the 12 Pro Max and I'm going to jump in the view controller where we're going to be writing out our code. So first things first, to actually deal with fonts, we need a label. So I'm going to go ahead and create a label here and we're going to start talking about, or actually looking at I should say, different semantic fonts, what the heck it is and why you should actually be using them instead of you know hard-coded font sizes. So here we're going to create a label, it's going to be a UI label, we're going to return it here just like that, and let's see, we'll say label, number of lines is going to be zero so we can line wrap, we'll also go ahead and center align the uh, text, and then we're going to go ahead and give it some text. So I'm going to go ahead and say the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog and let's go ahead and add this uh, to our view hierarchy view add sub view label we'll also go ahead and just center this guy so we're going to say label dot center is view dot center just like that and i'll say label size to fit now, if we go ahead and just give this a run, what we expect to see is pretty, you know, standard, nothing too crazy going on here quite yet, but you'll notice uh, two things. The first thing we'll notice uh, is that the font will just be the standard font that you're going to get out of the box, uh, no customized size, et cetera, et cetera, and it looks, it looks all right. Now, what if we wanted to bump up the font? So uh, a lot of you might know, well, you do something along the lines of the following. So you say font equals, you either supply a font name or you say system font passing in a size, maybe we'll go with 50, and let's see what that ends up looking like. It's gonna obviously be much longer uh, and larger, and the reason it's getting truncated is because the size to fit here uh, actually just expands it for the whole uh, screen width that the label takes up, which is not correct. What we wanna do is say label size that fits, and we wanna pass in a size here, so we're gonna say view.bounds, and once we have this, we can then go ahead and say label, uh, dot frame is going to be CG rect zero zero uh, we're gonna pass in zero for both of these so zero zero size dot width and size dot height framing besides the point let's go ahead and give this a run let's see why this is yelling at me here something is off somewhere let's see if I can find that error really quickly all right, it looks like it's not too happy about label size that fits. Uh, View.bounds.size is what we need to pass into there. Now we won't be seeing the label get cut off, but herein lies the problem. Now, when we say size 52 or size 50 here, this hard-coded font size, while there's nothing wrong with it functionally, it becomes difficult once you start working with different platforms, albeit Android, web, um, when you start working with designers and professional design tools like Figma, Zeppelin, Photoshop, there's something known as semantic fonts. And semantic fonts are a, a more or less universal way to uh, bucket different font sizes and styles together. So what I mean by that is as follows. So instead of doing a hard-coded font like that, you would do something like the following. You would say label.font is a preferred font, and you're gonna pass in a text style. If you hit the dot, you're gonna see a bunch of different text styles here. You'll see large title, body, call out, captions, you know, uh, subheadings, titles, etc. Now, looking at this, it's hard to say what these translate into, and 
um, after doing this for so many years, my transparent way of understanding this is you just got to kind of play with it. So this is basically what a large title looks like. Now, conversely, let's say we change this to a footnote, which I believe is much smaller, you're going to notice that the size is reflected. So in other words, these text styles under the hood, obviously have different font sizes, but when a designer is designing a professional app design in Figma or any of these uh, very commonly used design tools, there's several of them, they can let you know that it should be body text. Or if you're you know, putting something at the top of your UI, at the top of your view, probably want to go with a title. Now, what the heck is a call out or a caption? Some of these are less uh, you know, intuitive to just figure out what they are by reading them. So you kind of have to play with them. So you can see call outs and all of these are pretty small. But generally, the ones you probably care about are body. And then you've also got title one, two, three. And those are you know bolder as well. And they reflect different sizes. So there's title two. We can go and change this to title one. And the one other thing that I wanted to draw everyone's attention to is when you saw I wrote out this function, there was another version of it. There's one that took a preferred font with a text style, so let's say a large title, as well as a compact, uh, rather compatible with. So compatible with takes in a trade collection. Now a trade collection, you can go ahead and pass in things like layout direction. So layout direction is for you know languages that are right to left. Uh, so languages like Arabic and things like that, but trait collections also offer a lot more information. So you can also specify things like the display scale. You can specify the appearance. You can specify the legibility height. So things like dynamic font and things of that nature. So for example, if we just go in here and we say right to left, this is perfectly valid. I don't think the fonts will look any different in this case if we go ahead and give this a run, but I at least wanted to call it out that trait collection based configuration is available. And the reason it's really important is because if you think about uh, something like dynamic fonts, where the font size changes for those that turn it on in settings, you probably want a different preferred style. So if we go in, let's see if I can find one that we can tweak with uh, right now. So let's see, there should be one in here where we can initialize this with a height for legibility. So let's see if I can find that one. So here is the legibility height, and we can pass in a weight here for the legibility, it looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and pass in maybe bold, and I'm gonna change the type here for the textile to body. So if you go ahead and give this a run now, you're gonna notice it is body text, but it is bolded. Now, if I go ahead and get rid of this, pass in nil so it doesn't complain. Let's see, let's see why that's yelling at me probably get away with that. Go ahead and give that a run and we should see the same body text but it just won't be bolded now. So unbolded and then let me undo all that, run it again and now it'll be bolded. So the point is uh, that hopefully should be clear now is the trait collection will uh, alter how the text style gets rendered. And this way, you don't have to deal with you know font sizes and is it bold, is it italic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, could you use font sizes explicitly like we've done up here? Absolutely, it's not wrong by any means. However, there's a big shift generally when you start dealing with designers and working with you know uh, different components where you want to make everything uniform and look similar, you want to use semantic fonts. And similarly, this is actually how uh, Apple talks about colors. So semantic colors, is my you might have heard of before, are things like system blue or system orange. I'm going to make a separate video on that, how Apple defines those colors and why they're called semantic colors. So anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today in regards to fonts. Very, very simple topic, but something that a lot of people have been asking me about lately, so I figured I'd make a video. If you enjoyed the video and haven't done so already, drop a like down below. Leave a comment and let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to answer any comments that you guys have. Uh, and subscribe to the channel if you're new, if you want to stick around for daily iOS, Swift, SwiftUI, and other tech-related videos. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.